welcome to our message this morning. This is the fourth and the final message in our little series that I've called Autumn 2021, A Season of Promise. And today we're going to look at the promise that God gives of eternal life. Eternal life. A little girl was talking to a teacher about whales. The teacher told her it was physically impossible for a whale to swallow a human. But the girl insisted that a whale had swallowed the prophet Jonah. The teacher got a bit irritated and reiterated that it was impossible. The little girl then had an idea and she said, well, when I get to heaven, I'll ask Jonah. And the teacher responded, well, what if Jonah went to hell? To which the young student quickly replied, then you can ask him. This little girl knew that she was going to heaven and she was pretty sure that her teacher wasn't. You see, friends, there are really only two possible destinations, heaven or hell. And so we better know with certainty which way we're headed. Have you noticed that we live in a culture that disses anything that's dogmatic? In our politically correct climate, there is no tolerance for exclusive truth claims. It seems that we have more and more knowledge, but less and less certainty. Many churches have caved as well, with some pastors saying you can't know anything with any certainty. So this religion of certain uncertainty is causing many today to bail on their beliefs, leading some to become spiritual shipwrecks. Now, by God's grace, that won't happen here. We have always been anchored to the word of God and will always preach that Jesus is the only way to heaven. That marriage is is a covenant between one man and one woman for life, and that the unborn matter to the Almighty, and therefore must matter to us. Friends, I want to tell you today, when it comes time for the Lamb's Book of Life to be opened, there will be no confusion or uncertainty. No wrong names will be called. Those who know Jesus Christ can be certain that they are saved. And so the main idea for today is this. If you're saved by the Savior, you'll be safe with the Savior forever. If you're saved by the Savior, you'll be safe with the Savior forever. This promise has been referred to as eternal security or the perseverance of the saints or by the phrase, once saved, always saved. The promise of eternal life means that those who are born again can never lose their salvation and are assured that they will go to heaven when they die. In an age of short attention spans, soundbite sermons, superficial spirituality and doctrinal shallowness, I want you today to dig with me into God's word so the promise of eternal life becomes very real and personal to you. It's my aim that we, we will be convinced by both the content and clarity of God's word. Get this settled once and for all so that we will pass this promise on to our children and our grandchildren as well. Now when it comes to the promise of of eternal life. I want to say there are four possibilities related to this promise. Number one, you, be, you can be lost and know that you're lost. That's tragic. You can be lost and think that you're saved. That's dangerous. You can be saved and not know it for sure. That's unsettling. But you can be saved and know that you're secure. And I say that's comforting. 
I would love it if everyone would be in this final group by the time we're finished. Because if you're saved by the Savior, you'll be safe with the Savior forever. So we're going to limit our focus today to just one of the human authors of the Bible. And to two of the five books that he wrote. His name is John. And we'll first of all camp out in the Gospel of John. And then we'll head over to the first letter that he wrote. The letter of 1 John. So in the Gospel of John, John tells us why he wrote his Gospel. In John chapter 20 verse 31 he says, But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. We read the familiar words of John chapter 3, first of all verse 16, but I'm going to go right through to verse 18. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not say, send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. Then we read in John chapter 3, verse 36, Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life, but whoever rejects the Son will not see life. For God's wrath remains on him. Then we read in John chapter 5 verse 24. I tell you the truth. Whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life and will not be condemned. He has crossed over from death to life. Now the passage I want to make a few comments on today. John chapter 10, verse 27 to 30. The words of Jesus. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one can snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and the Father are one. So I read that verse. I wrote down a number of observations from that passage. The first one is this. True sheep listen to and follow the lead of the shepherd. Secondly, Jesus knows those who are his. And he will successfully keep secure those who are given to him. Verse number three. Eternal life is a gift given by the Savior. My salvation depends entirely on what the Lord Jesus Christ has done for me. If you have this gift, you have it eternally. Because God never starts a project that he does not finish. Fourthly. Those who know him will never perish. This is a strong double negative in the Greek. It actually says something like this. They will indeed not ever perish. That's the covenant that God has made with us through the Lord Jesus. Number five. Our salvation can never be stolen. The word snatch means to pluck or pull or take by force. No person or problem or circumstance or situation or sin can grab you out of the grip of God. Number six, the greatness of the Father is the ground of safety for the sheep. Jesus says he is greater than all. Number seven, we are doubly secure 
because we are gripped by the Father and the Son. Who is able to snatch us from their hands? John tells us that our Lord's sheep could not be in better hands. We're held in the hand of the Son and the hand of the Father. No one is more secure than one of his sheep. Now I've heard some people say that a person may take himself out of God's hand. But would you notice that this verse says nothing about a believer holding on to the Father's hand. It says that the Father and the Son are holding tightly to us. Let me say it again. If you're saved by the Savior, you'll be safe with the Savior forever. Now we move across to the letter of 1 John. 1 John. The Gospel of John shows us how to be saved. The letter of 1 John gives certainty to those who are saved. Let me read 1 John chapter 2 verse 25. And this is what he promised us, even eternal life. In this letter, John tells us that his purpose in writing is so that we might know that we have eternal life. Listen to 1 John 5 verse 11 to 13. And this is the testimony. God has given us eternal life. And this life is in his Son. He who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know that you have eternal life. In that passage, I see a number of truths. I listed six of them. Let's go through it. The word testimony is the word for witness and was used in the courtroom setting. In this picture, God is on the witness stand declaring that eternal life is to be found in his son. Secondly, eternal life is the present possession of believers. If you have the son, you have eternal life right now. We see this in verse 11 of what we've just read. Has given. Verse 12. Has life. Verse 13. You have eternal life now. But thirdly, eternal life is also a future fact. Because of the new birth, when you leave this world, you will live with Christ forever. Eternal means without beginning and without end. Eternal life begins at conversion and it continues from there forever. Number four, God wants us to know for certain. We read there so that you may know. In fact, the word know appears 39 times in this very short letter. It's not a matter of feeling or thinking or hoping, but of knowing. Often referred to as to be sure. Too many of us follow our feelings instead of focusing on the faithfulness of God. Number five, believing in Jesus is the only way to have eternal life. And to believe means to count on somebody or to trust in them. Now this is a very exclusive statement. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. Jesus said exactly the same thing in John chapter 14 verse 6. He said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one, no one comes to the Father except through me. And then sixthly, assurance comes from what has been written in the word of God. John says, I write these things to you. We can't rely on our emotions or our experiences or even our spiritual progress. We rely on the promise of God in his word. And so we have what we can call settled assurance. Settled assurance. What we've learned is that you can be convinced that you are saved 
and certain that you will be with the Savior forever. So people ask the question, can I lose my salvation? And I always come from this angle. It depends on who saved you. If God saved you, you can't lose your salvation because it depends on God. If you saved yourself, you can lose it because it depends on you. Your salvation, friend, is eternally secure if God did the saving. But if you think that salvation is some kind of cooperative venture and effort between you and God, when you do your part, He does His part, then you're in big trouble. Because what you start, you could mess up along the way. But if God started it, He'll finish it. Philippians 1 verse 6 says, Being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it out to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. You see, a salvation you could lose is not much of a salvation at all. You can't be sure that you have it. And if you have it today, you can't be certain that you'll have it tomorrow. And if you lose it, you can't be sure that you'll get it back again. And if you get it back again, you can't be sure that you'll keep it the next time. What kind of salvation is that? It's a man-centered salvation that makes heaven dependent on what you do. You see, the fundamental problem with saying that a Christian can lose his or her salvation is that we would have to say that God does not fulfill his promises. But here's the truth. If you're saved by the Savior, you'll be safe with the Savior forever. If you want to make sure today about your salvation, you can pray a prayer just like this. In fact, you could pray it right there where you're sitting. Just bow your head and repeat after me this prayer of commitment to the Lord Jesus Christ, asking him to give you the gift of eternal life. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner and I'm making a mess of my life. I know that I cannot save myself. I believe that you are the Son of God and that you died on the cross as my substitute and that you rose from the dead on the third day. I turn from the way I've been living by repenting and ask you to forgive me for all my sins. I believe and I now receive the gift, the free gift of eternal life. I trust you now as my Lord and Savior. With all that I am and all that I have, I give myself to you. Make me into the kind of person you want me to be. Thank you for the certainty of knowing that once you save me, I will be safe with you forever. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. If you pray that, and really mean it from your heart, believing in the Lord Jesus, you receive from God the free gift of eternal life. Let me end with this one verse in Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10. That if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you confess and are saved. Hallelujah. What a Savior. What a good God to promise us and to give us and to allow us to be sure that we have received the gift of eternal life. 
And so to the family of God, those who have been saved and born again and received this wonderful gift, the Lord Jesus has given us a reminder. Now this is one of our COVID-friendly communion packs that we serve at our church, and I'm going to be using it as I lead you in the communion today. Whenever we have communion, we're reminded that we have received the free gift of eternal life through the body and the blood of Jesus that was broken and shed for us. And so we read in the Word of God that Jesus took the bread. He gave thanks, and then he said to his disciples, This is my body, which is for you. Let's eat it with remembrance, with gratitude, and thanksgiving. In the same way, the Lord Jesus took the cup and said to his disciples, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This is for the forgiveness of your sins. Paul says, Whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death and all that it means until Jesus comes. So let's drink it with gratitude and with remembrance for what the Lord Jesus did for us. Thank you, Lord, for your body and your blood, so freely given as a gift to us, that we might receive from you the gift of eternal life. We worship you, we praise you, we humble ourselves before you. We say thank you for the cross. And now, Lord, as we part, may we go with the cross ever before us, reminding us that we have not saved ourselves, but we have been saved because the innocent died for the guilty. Now may the love of God, the grace of the Lord Jesus, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all and keep us now and forever. Amen. Goodbye. God bless you. I look forward to seeing you soon.